this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Y'all, I am back with a simple little sewing project for you. Um, before I get going, I just want to tell everyone thank you, thank you, thank you so much for stopping by my channel and clicking on this video. I really do appreciate it. Every view really helps me. If you're not subscribed, I'd love your subscription. That helps my channel grow as well. So thank you so much. I have noticed I have a few new subscribers, so thank you if you're new. And if you've been around a while, I really appreciate you so much. I appreciate your loyalty and your dedication. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. I filmed this video once already, and I realized there was one imperative part that I was filming that I forgot to hit the go button. So I'm refilming y'all. So what I'm making is a hot pads. And I recently picked up a bunch of fat quarters at Joann's and I had someone ask me, can you make a scrunchie with a fat quarter? My answer for you is a small one. Yes. But if you want to make one, a large one, like these big, big ones that I'm making, no, you cannot. It's not enough fabric, okay? So, but you can make small ones, like for babies or little girls with real thin hair. You can. Okay, but what you can do with your fat quarters, and I have done this multiple times on my channel. I think I bring it back at least every year or every other year because it's such an easy project. And when I have new people come along, they might not have seen this video. That's why I like to do this. So what I am making is I'm going to be making the kitchen hot pad. This is the one I made earlier. Isn't it just beautiful? I love this one so, so much. Um, it turned out just perfectly. Now, um, I realized I didn't film a, a good part that I really needed to show you guys. I didn't hit the go button. So that's why I'm coming back and I'm doing this again. So you can make one of these um, hot pads with your fat quarters. And what you're going to need is one piece of fusible fleece. And this one, it's, this one is not a high loft, it's kind of a low loft, but it works great. And this side, this side has the glue on it, okay? If you don't have fusible fleece, you can use just a regular piece of fleece. Whatever you choose to use is fine. Just long, I like to use fusible because it holds it in place when I'm sewing, okay? So you're gonna need that and you're going to be need, oh, and you're gonna need this in a 10 inch square. You're gonna need then five squares, 10 inch squares of fabric. Now, these were from, these um, Hello Kitties was from a fat quarter that I had in my stash. And I'll show you, I still like have this one that I haven't even cut yet. I have like two or three that I didn't cut yet. But I thought, you know what, I'm gonna use it. I might as well, it's okay. So what I am doing is, I'm just, I pulled this one out just so you could see. A fat quarter is 18 by 21. So you're gonna need two 10 inch squares, okay? So because this is a 21 inch in the, in the length, um, it will work great for you. You have that extra inch left over. Okay, I've already gone ahead, cut my fabrics, just kind of save time on the video. And I think what I decided, I was gonna use this cute Hello Kitty for the bottom. And then I'm gonna use this plaid with this Hello Kitty. And I thought adding this plaid with that, because it's got that blue, and I thought the blue that's here on the fabric, that will really tie in nicely. Don't be afraid to put patterns together. Y'all, it will all work out just fine. Okay, so once you've got your five squares cut, 10 by 10, and you've got your piece of fusible fleece cut at 10 by 10, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do some ironing, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna put this one for my back piece. So I'm gonna remove these, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna take my fusible fleece, and I'm gonna lay it on top of my my piece of piece of fabric. Now this is just a cotton fabric, okay? So I'm just kind of if you find it's a little bit small, just kind of stretch it a little bit. It's what it's fine. I probably just didn't cut it exactly the size I needed. And this is a scrap. So, I'm making it work. Okay. So that will be fine. So now that you've got it in place, you're going to flip it over. 
and you're gonna take your iron and you're gonna gently iron this down. You're gonna fuse it to the back of the fabric, okay? I like to start in the middle and kind of work my way out. So start in the middle and work your way out so you don't have any wrinkles in the middle, okay? Okay, so once you've got that then you're gonna put it aside. I'm gonna put it over here by my sewing machine. And then you're going to take your other four pieces and you're going to iron them in half and you're gonna put them corner to corner just like this. Once you got your corners, then you're going to iron and I like to make sure my corners are there and then iron out like that. Okay, I'm gonna do the other ones. I love the, the gray background on this because that way everything is, believe it or not, I'm saying this, that way everything is not all totally pink. Okay. Iron that out. And you can iron the other side if you'd like to. Okay. And I am using my iron is Aluso, Alicio. I don't even know how to pronounce it, y'all. Don't come for me, okay? <laughs> I just know it's a good iron, okay? I'm gonna do these two pieces, go to my corners. And I'm going to iron out just like I did the others. You can flip, iron the other side. There we go. And then I've got one more piece, putting to my corner. iron and then away okay flipping and ironing okay so let me move the iron over here so I won't get burned I have a habit of having things too close okay so what you're going to need to do now is you're going to take your back piece you're going to put the fleece side down okay and then you're going to take your take your uh, pieces that you iron in half. You're gonna take the first one and you're gonna line it up along the edge and put this corner to the corner, okay? Then you're gonna take one of your other Hello Kitty prints or whichever print you use, and you're gonna put it this corner to the corner, okay? Then you're gonna take your other, your other piece and you're going to put it over here and you're going to put it corner to corner. Then lastly, you're gonna take this one and you're gonna put it corner to corner. And you're probably thinking, what? That didn't, how's that work? What you're gonna do is you're gonna lift this up, lift this up, and you're going to put that down on top it like this and there you have the pattern do you see how easy that is now what you're going to do is you're going to take some straight pins I'm just got my little pins here and I am going to just pin down the sides get my corners I just do the corners and you can do this middle part so nothing moves when you sew you can, you can turn your mat or whatever you're working with. Some of my pens are getting dull. I have, have more. I need to just pull them out and use them. Okay, I'm gonna add this one. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna keep pinning my corners and the sides until I get all the way around. Then I'm going to put this under my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a straight stitch all the way around the whole perimeter of my hot pad. And then lastly, right here. And there you go. You can pin the corner if you or the center if you would like as well. That way nothing moves when you're sewing. But you can pin that as well if you like. 
Now let's go on over to our sewing, over to my sewing machine and we're gonna get this put together. Okay. So I am using my Sanger Modern Quilter. This machine, I've had it eight years. It's a workhorse. If you hear, if you've seen my sewing videos, I usually say it and the reason I call it a workhorse is because it is. It works so hard and it's a good sturdy machine. Um, but anyway, I am using Guterman thread. I like the 100% polyester thread and I have my stitch length on a two and a half. My needle, I believe, is a 9014. I do have people that ask me that as well. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your pieces in place and you're gonna line it up. I line my presser foot up with the edge of my fabric. So I'm just gonna sew a few stitches. You can back stitch. And you're gonna sew all the way around the square. So let me pull this girl, this little girl out, making sure everything's lined up on the edge. I'm gonna pull the next pin. I'm going to use my down feature that I have on my machine. That way when I turn my project, everything stays in place. Okay. I'm going to go over just a little bit. I want to make sure everything's lined up. I'm going to put my needle back down and I'm going to sew. I think my I think it's about time for me to clean out my machine again. I have sewed so many scrunchies. I hear, and I hear it getting noisy. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my pen and I'm gonna finish sewing all the way around. Okay. If you have that down feature, it's really nice to hold your fabric in place and you can just turn when it's time for you to go to the next side. I'm going to go ahead and remove my pen, hold things in place with my hand. And you're going to sew all the way down to the end. When you get to the end, do a back stitch. Hold that all in place. Okay. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead, and this is what it looks like. I can take out this pin now, and I just poke my own finger. Okay, so I took out my pin, and now we're gonna get this flipped over. Okay, so what I like to do, and this helps to reduce the bulk on the corners, is I like to come over here and kind of cut my corners. Don't cut into that seam that you just sewed. Cut above it. Do all four corners and do this before you turn your project. Okay, move my scraps or my trash out of the way. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your project, you're gonna put your hand up inside and you're going to find the corner and you're gonna poke it out with your fingers, okay? Just like this. You're gonna do all four just like this. And one more and then we're gonna fix it. Okay, so it kinda looks like this, kinda running amok here. I'm going to go ahead and kind of straighten out the back, straighten out the front, and just kind of get everything all nice and neat. I, I usually take like a pencil or something like that, but I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm going to push out the corners the best that I can, 
all four. And then I'm gonna do one last one. This one looks pretty good. And then once you've got it like this, you're gonna give your project a good press, okay? So I'm gonna grab my iron and I'm gonna iron down the sides really well. And I wanna make sure that everything is looking nice and flat. It helps when you sew, if you iron your project. Now I'm gonna flip that over, do the back. I am sewing scrunchy still. I am not gonna stop until I'm done. So they're coming out really good. I'm very, I'm proud of myself, you know. I really wanna finish them all. That way then I can move on to my next craft fair idea. So I probably have, I cut all the solid satin that I uh, had purchased the other day. I've cut all that and so um, I've already started cutting. I probably have about 18 more than I'm gonna sew. And then I think that'll be it for my scrunchies. This little corner needs to be popped out a little bit more just so it looks good. So I'm gonna use my scissors, kind of just kind of poke it up in there. There we go, looks good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a top stitch all around the perimeter of my hot pad. Now, you don't have to sew these down if you don't want to. You can even sew just the center down or you can leave it because as you see, they're all laying down nice and flat. But I like to do a top stitch going all the way around and just kind of finishes it off. So I'll be back. So now I have sewed around the perimeter, as you see, all the way around. Looks really good. Love these on the back, and it just is different. It's different. You can use any fabrics that you want. Any, if you have all kinds of different, like fat quarters, any of them are going to go well together. And there, there you go. I like to give it one last press. And look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, and just fun. So, I hope that this is something that you consider making. If you have a sewing machine and you're new to sewing, this is a beginner friendly project. It really is. Look at now I have two in different colors so fun you can just make all kinds you can do them in like if you want to do these like in sport teams or whatever and you want to give them as a gift to someone um that would be really cool if you want to do just like maybe christmas prints and give them in a christmas gift along with maybe something pair it with something it would be great as well but these are so easy and so fun to make and just fast to make they really, really are. You see, it didn't take me long at all to put this video together for you. And I hope that this is something that you will definitely give a try. Um, like I said, pull out that sewing machine. And if you have one sitting in your closet full of dust because you never use it, maybe you're intimidated by it, pull it out. You're not going to hurt it. Just give it a try and you will just love it. And this is a beginner friendly project for you as well. Anyway, thank you so, so much, everyone, for watching. I appreciate you, and I've told you in the past that you're amazing, and don't let anyone tell you different. Bye, y'all.